Alright guys, so today as usual, we're going to be going over the pseudocode first for CS50 cache. This is in PSET 1. And we're going to hit the main problems to address first. So first you take the input from the user and make sure that it's a number. <clears throat> That's very important. And takes it, we take that number and print it and print the minimum number of coins with which changes can be made. I mean change can be made. And then we're going to break down the problems even more. So from these two, we're going to break it down into, it looks like we're going to have six total. And uh, so we're going to take the input, for the, for the first one, we're going to take the input, we're going to have to store that input, and then we're going to also going to have to validate that input. So that one problem is actually three, if we break it down. <clears throat> then for the second problem, we're going to break that down into three more. So for that, we're gonna have to play. We're gonna have to have a place to keep track of the number of coins we accumulate while counting. Then we're gonna have to take a, co a coin-specific size chunk out of the total, and for each of these coins, we have to add the track to the to a tracking number to make sure that it rounds. And then we return the tracked number and we print it to the screen. Okay. So. Let's dive into some code. I'm going to make a new file so that we can see. But you're going to have to name yours cache.c. So first, we always have to in do our includes. So include cs50.h. I'm going to include math.h. These are just the libraries that we have to include so that we have the correct functions to work with, or else it won't. The code, some of the code we use won't work because it's not present yet. <coughs> so let's going back to that first problem. We have to take input from the user, and make sure that it's a number. So as a broad kind of statement, we're gonna say we're gonna have to get we're taking a number from the user. So we're gonna be returning. A number from a function, and let's just say it's a float because it can be um, because dollars and cents like create a decimal number. We want a float, so we're gonna have to ask for a positive float, and it's not gonna need anything because it's gonna take from us because it's gonna take the input from the user. So let's make a little section. Okay, so I like to always declare my variables first. So we're going to need that in, that float for, um, for positive float. Uh, that, this is where we store the number that we take from the user. So then we're also going to need a number, like a little thing to kind of be a flag. That It's going to be negative until proven positive. And basically, it's a switch that we turn on and off. And it tells us if the number they give us is true or not. So if it's negative or not in this case. So how do we keep asking the question over and over? Like we said here. It has to take the input and then validate the input. So to validate it, so we have we, we have taking input, which is the whole function itself. But we're going to have to validate it. We're actually going to have to take the input inside of a validation like section. So to validate, we're going to do a while loop. Let's give the while loop the negative, that a uh, negative boolean. And that's going to be its condition. So while the negative is true, which we're starting it off as true, it's going to keep asking the user a question. And the question it's going to ask is, give me the change owed. So this is going to pop up to the user right here and they're going to know from that prompt that they have to input the change owed. And then this get float will take that and store it as a float inside of our positive float uh, variable which we declared up here. If we didn't declare it up here it would not work because it is, is just, the box doesn't exist yet. 
So <coughs> now we have to check to make sure that the float is positive. So if positive float is greater than zero, we're going to set negative to false. So this sets to false if our number is positive. And this is a way to interact with variables here. You can a boolean you can set to either true or true or false. And while it's true, this this whole thing will run. This thing right here, this block. And if we set it to false, that means it'll stop asking the user for a float. So that means we've stored the correct data and we can stop this. And always, always, if we promise to give a float to a function, we need to fulfill that promise and return that float. So here we're going to return the variable positive float. And what this does is if we call this function ask positive float, we're going to receive a positive float that the user gave us. Okay. So next, the next problem. So for the second function, we're going to we're going to have to take the number from the first function and use it to print the minimum minimum number of coins with which change can be made. So from that problem, we can see that we need a place to keep track of the number of coins we accumulate while counting. We also need to take a coin specific ch size chunk out of the total for each coin and add to the tracking number to make sure and make sure it around. And then we return the tracked number and print it, print it to the screen. So let's just focus on keeping track of the number of coins we accumulate while counting for now. So we're going to declare this function. We're going to name it coin number to be simple. Give it a little space. And so this. This function will perform the tracking of coins we've counted and return it as an integer. So like usual, I like to declare my variables first. So int total since is going to be the first one. And like we were told, we need to use round. And we're going to take, we're going to use the round function from the math.h. And we're going to feed it ask positive floats return value. Because if you can recall from earlier, ask positive float, all it does is give you a function of a float that the user gives us. So it takes the float and then it rounds it and multiplies it by 100 so that we have the number of cents and not the number of dollars. So stores total cents. Then we have to declare a variable to st store the coin count. And for that, we're going to do another int. We're going to name a num of coins. Keep it simple so everyone can understand. We're going to have to declare a variable to store our remainders. And that's going to be an integer as well. So we have to store our remainders because um, between the math that we, like between taking out chunks, from the total sense, we're going to have a remainder that we need to store, or else it just gets lost once we do the math. So let's start it off at zero. Then we're going to have a temp number. This way you have to get creative sometimes in programming. So this temp number. It'll become cl clearer later, rather than explaining it now. So declare variables to store coin values is next. So the computer doesn't know how much a quarter is worth, so we're going to have to tell it. So int quarter equals 25, int dime equals 10, int nickel equals 5, int penny equals 1. So 
So now for the math, we're just basically going to be cascading down a list of coins from the biggest to the smallest. And it's all going to use basically the fame, same formula. So we're going to start off with an if statement. So if total since is greater than or equal to the value of a quarter, we allow it to go through this statement right here. So the equivalent of that phrase that I just wrote, the comment, is total sin oh, oops, total since is greater than or equal to quarter. So this is comparing the two variables. So if the total since is 100, that is greater than a quarter, so it's going to go through this code right here that we're about to go through. So first things first, we're going to have to take remainder and set it equal to the total since. And we're going to use the modulo operator. So what this does is, let's say we have 100 for total, <laughs> I keep typing center, total since. Let's see if I type it up there. No, okay. I did mess up right here and put cent. Okay, <clears throat> so the quarter is 25 and total cents is 100. That means we have four times that quarter goes into total cents, and that would set the remainder to zero. And let, let's make it 101 divided uh, modulo quarter, which would give us a remainder of one. So then we have to set a temp number and set that equal to total since minus remainder. So let's say we have 101. We're going to subtract it by 1. So we're going to have 100 left. And the reason we do this is because we have to actually find the number of coins. So next we're going to take the num of coins and set it equal to num of coins plus temp num and divide it by quarter. So this is going to take the temp num of 100 divided by the 25 of quarter and that's going to be 4 and we're going to add it to the number of coins that we currently have which is 0. So the number of coins essentially right now is zero. And then we're going to set the total since as equal to the remainder. So now we have the remainder of one equaling total since. So it's going to keep going down the list and doing the same thing. And it would just reject the, the dime, the nickel. But then it would, at the penny, it would be like, oh, this is equal to one penny. So we're going to do the same formula again. So this isn't like the most mathematical way of doing it, but as someone with a pretty weak math background, coming up with this wasn't didn't take me so long. And I, I think you can really give someone new some insight into how like the mathematics works in programming, even if you don't have like a PhD in math. Because as long as you get the end result, most of the time it's pretty much the same. So we're going to repeat this process for the dime. And yeah, I mean, I'm not supposed to repeat myself, but this is just for a project. So I'm basically just copying the same exact thing. In fact, I can just copy and paste it, the whole thing. So dime, 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 again, nickel, nickel, someone is cringing so hard right now, I can guarantee it, and we're going to do it again for penny. Yeah, this channel is for beginners, so if you're a C++ god or something like that, um, you can keep watching my content if, it, if you like being infuriated.
And okay, so in the end, we're gonna have to return number of coins. So after it's gone through all this, it's gonna add up the number of coins that we've accumulated while going through this math and spit out this num this integer number of coins. So that was the ultimate goal. So now we have to use the, these two functions in the main function. So in C, main is always like this. Well, this is one of the ways you can do it. We're just not using some arguments right now from the command line. It's just the most basic way to have a, a main function. A main function. So we're gonna basically inject this variable into a string that prints to the console. And this variable is gonna come from coin num. And this is our whole program right here. I'm gonna have my code in the description so you can click it to check it out if you want. So I pasted the code over here and I'm gonna make cache and then I'm going to run it. So let's say 120. Alright, so now I can go view my score. Let's refresh. Alright, we got cash at 100%. Review submission. Okay. Let's check 50. There we go. Might not be the greatest program, but it didn't get rejected. At 100%, style-wise too, that's what's up. This is Code Phony out. Thanks for watching. Peace.